Today, I want to show you how to create a dynamic attendance sheet within Excel. There are certainly many ways that you can do this, and there's no right or wrong way, and maybe that's what makes it fun. There are many features and functions that can be swapped out for one or the other, all to get your desired result. In this example, we'll take a look at the cast of the Office series and create an attendance sheet based on a Monday through Friday schedule. Why are you here? Now we're only going to pull in the work days, excluding weekends, but you can certainly adjust this to account for any particular holidays or even PTO time. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here's our list of employee names that we're going to use to create our attendance sheet. Now we'll have to do some formatting and what have you, but first let's get all of our formulas and everything in place. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and sell A2. I'm going to enter a date. Let's just go with January 1st, 2024. And for aesthetic purposes, I will go ahead and I will merge these, center that, fold it. And I want to actually format this as the month by itself. So you can either right click and select format cells. You can use the ribbon, but I'm just going to hit control and the number one. And that's going to bring up my format window. I will go to custom. And to get the formatting I want, I'm just gonna enter four M's. And you can see now that I have the full month entered. Select OK. The next thing I wanna do is actually create a formula that's gonna pull the days of the desired month, but only the work days, so Monday through Friday traditionally. Now you can do this in several various methods. I'm gonna use a combination of workday, month, sequence, and network days. And once complete, I'll break down exactly what's happening in this formula. So I want to select cell D5, and I'll enter my formula. After finishing my formula, I'm getting a return of a serial number. So we want to actually format that to the days. So if I go ahead, I will select all of them. Again, use Control-1, go to my custom formatting. And for my days, I'll just go ahead and enter a D. Click OK. As you can see, we go one through five, which would be Monday through Friday. We skip two days for the weekend and then continue on and on throughout the end. Now, just a quick note here, whenever we want to change the month being selected, you want to use the first day of each month. So let's say we picked March, we'll do 3-1-2024, hit enter. And you can see that in cell D5, the first working day of the month is March 1st. And then we hit a weekend, pick back up on Monday on the 4th. And if I open my little calendar here, you can see that does line up. Friday is the 1st, following Monday is a 4th. Now looking back at the formula, let me try to explain what exactly is going on. So the first part here, we have the workday function. And as you can see from the description, the workday function returns the number of working days between a start date and an end date. Now you could use the Workday International functions, you could set certain holidays to abide by, but for now we'll keep it relatively simple. So the first argument in the Workday function is a start date. And to select the start date, we're actually gonna use another Workday function. And what this does is select the first workday at the beginning of the month. So you're telling Excel you want the first workday and to get the first of the month, we're using the end of month function. So by default, end of month would pick, in this case, March 31st. But by selecting this negative one, we're going backwards month. So technically speaking, it would pull February 29th. But by adding this one under the workday days argument, we're adding one day to that, which gives us March 1st. Now, the second argument in the first workday function is how many days we want to continue on in this sequence which is why we use the sequence function. The first argument of the sequence function is rows. We'll leave that blank and enter a comma because we don't want the row sequencing down. We want to actually use the columns, which is why in the next one, the columns, we use another formula. And this is our network days function. And network days is similar to workday function, but what network days does, it calculates the number of days between a start date and end date that would be defined as a working day, hence Monday through Friday. So our start date is cell A2, which is our month, which is also technically the first day of that month. 
The end date, we use the end of month function again to get the end of the month. This time there's no negative one. So the end of the month in cell A2 is actually March 31st. The last bit of our sequence function that we're gonna use is where we want the sequence to begin. And that's gonna be a zero. We don't wanna skip any other days. We want it to begin on the first working day of the month. I hope that made sense. It can be a little bit confusing, but there are other ways you could do this. As I said, I just find this one to be the easiest for me. I'm actually gonna take all these just to format it a bit. I'm gonna change it to 45 pixels. And while I'm at it, I might as well center everything. So now that we have the number of days, it would probably help if we actually had the day of the week. And we can make that dynamic with another formula, but we need a helper cell for that. As you can see in column Y, there's nothing in this cell for the days of the month. However, if I were to change the date, let's say we go back to January, and you can see here that we actually have the 30th and the 31st in column Z. So that's gonna change. We want our days of the week to change with it. And before I forget, since I forgot to format these earlier, go ahead and align those with the rest. So our helper cells, which will be found in row five, we wanna check if the cell is blank. Obviously there will be a formula in there with our sequence function, but if there's no actual value, we wanna leave that day above empty. Start with an if function and we'll say D5 equals blank. So if D5 equals blank, which is the cell right below, we wanna return nothing. If it is not blank, we want the day of the week. To do that, we have to use the weekday function. The weekday function requires a serial number. Now I don't wanna just select my cell in A2 because then that would be the same date throughout. We actually wanna reference the cells in row five. So it'll give us the appropriate day of the month. So to do that, I'll use a date function for the year. I will call the year of our cell A2. Go ahead and lock that in. So we don't want that moving as our formulas drag across for the month. Again, we'll select cell A2 and lock it in. And for the day, again, we will reference cell D5, which would be the numeric number below this row. Close that out, hit a comma. And for our return type, we're gonna go ahead and enter one, which will be our numbers Sunday through Saturday, one through seven, which is pretty standard. However, you can adjust this if you need to. Close out the function, hit enter. Now it's giving us a two, but the two actually represents a Monday since Sunday would be a number one. So to fix that, let me go ahead and highlight this, hit control one, go to our custom formatting, and we can enter three Ds. And as you can see from the sample, giving us three letters indicative of the day of the week. Hit okay. Let's actually highlight all this, get a tad smaller. So with that function set, we will go ahead, drag it all the way down. You know what? Let's just fix this while we're at it. Perfect. So to test it out, let's try February. We know February is a shorter month. Enter. And as you can see, nothing here. We have that formula, but nothing is there. So now our attendance sheet is a bit more dynamic. Now I want to insert some checkboxes so that way we can check off if someone was in attendance and we can leave it unchecked if they were not. If you're working in most versions of Excel, you probably want to use the developer tab, which you can activate in the settings if you don't already have it. And you would insert a checkbox either under the form controls or ActiveX. But I'm actually going to use the new checkbox feature that Excel has. If you want to learn more about that, I'll leave a link in the card above. You can check that out that is much easier than using the form controls. So I will go ahead, select my entire range, going all the way down to column Z, insert checkbox, and there you go. Now you certainly don't have to adjust these if you don't want to, but I think I will. If I go ahead, select the entire range, go up to the home tab, conditional formatting, and we will set a new rule. At the very bottom, I wanna use a formula. We want to say cell D5. Make sure you lock in that row number five so your conditional formatting is aligned across, is equal to a blank cell. We want to format it as white. Click OK. OK again. It seems to have worked. Let's go ahead and change our date again. And they are back. Perfect. 
Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to create a formula that's gonna take the average of the checkboxes. That way we have a percentage of how often the attendance was met for each employee. So I'll go down in cell A, B, row six. And what I wanna do is begin with a count if formula. So if we do count if, select our range, be all the way across to column Z, and we want it to count if the value is true, and then divide that by a count function. And we actually wanna count our row four. If I close that out, we definitely wanna reformat this. So if we check some of these off, our percentages is going up, perfect. Now, the reason we were counting from row four is because as you change the month, we have less or more days to work with. We want our percentage to accurately depict how many days or how many working days are in that month. For instance, if I change January to February and you see in cell A, B, row six, 43%, when I hit enter, it changes to 48%. So it has adjusted for the correct number of working days within the month. Now, first I need to lock in the count function because we want that row four to stay as the function goes down and selects the other employees. With that set, I'll go ahead, drag it down, put it out, looks good. All right. Now we could even pretty this up a little more. We could add some conditional formatting. I have some data bars. We can add some borders. Maybe some color. We could even change the color of the checkboxes if we wanted to. Just remember to keep in mind that as we change these dates, if you do decide to add some custom formatting, colors, borders, what have you, as you change the dates, the borders and color aren't going to adjust with it, unless you use further conditional formatting to set certain rules. For example, if we change this March 1st, and we go back and we change this December, you can see here that in column Y, our coloring and borders did not expand. So just something to keep in mind. I hope you all enjoyed that, and hopefully I didn't go too fast for you. Some of the formulas I use can be a bit tricky if you're not familiar with those type of functions. However, there's no reason that you have to create the exact same attendance sheet I did. If you want, you can simply enter the values of the days or even on a weekly format, and then just get right into the checkboxes and averages for your percentage. From there, add some colors, some borders, it's really up to you. Certainly recommend trying one out on your own. Feel free to add some pops of color and make it something that you can be proud of. Until next time, data people, thanks for watching.